Welcome to It Matters Radio. This is Monica Brinkman, and joining me as always for our special musical guest interviews is the wonderful Carrie Hall. Hello, Carrie. Hello, everybody. Welcome to It Matters Radio, and I'd like to welcome a beautiful young lady. She is a singer, songwriter, and actress, model, a lot of different hats there, and her name is Beck. Victoria. And that's who the Welcome, like Victoria. Victoria. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Hi, Victoria. <laughs> nice so to have much. you here. We've been waiting a while and looking so <laughs> forward to this. This has just been, we've just been very anxious. You are a beautiful lady with a beautiful voice. And I have to ask you, let's go back a few years. You were <laughs> one years old when you went on stage. Tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> Your first gig. <laughs> Uh, so I actually don't remember this moment, but um, I, obviously I have pictures. So it was my um, one year birthday and um, I guess I just ended up being on stage with a professional singer and I was holding the mic, um, I had that picture somewhere else, um, just singing I guess along with the professional singer. Um, yeah, I guess that, that was my first moment of um, singing on stage. Oh, you know you know so, what's amazing about that, it, it's like you were meant to sing. You were meant to perform and entertain, because <laughs> you, you know, a lot of children are really shy for a long, long time. But there you were singing along. <laughs> yeah. I think it took so, me quite a while um, to realize this was what I wanted to do. But um, after uni, that's when I decided that I want to do this professionally. So, yeah. Right. So classical we're glad training at age eleven—that's pretty young. What did? How did? How hard was that for you to start that at that age? Um. I don't think it was hard. Um, it was really fun for me because at school, like, I wanted to do everything, you know, as much as I can. Um, so I would do, like, music, sports, drama, academic, and then activities after school um, and volunteering and stuff. So I think classical training um, just happened to be one of the things that I wanted to do, uh, along with musical instruments. So then I had um, a vocal trainer, a classical trainer, and um, we took, like, ex you know, I took exams, so, like, grades here and there, um, ABRS and board. And um, it was just really fun because we um, got to sing in Italian, French, um, wow. Latin, the choir as well at school um, for several years, and gospel choir. So it was it was really fun for me. It's a different voice, um, classical voice, but yes, uh, yeah, it was. Uh, it was. Uh, yeah, I miss school because I got to do everything. You know, I, I always think it's good though to get some classical training because it stretches your voice. You you, you go beyond what you think you can do. And it's very useful, even in pop singing, rock singing, any type uh, yeah. of music. You know, I know you. it isn't the same type of um, vocals that you'll do for classical, but it, it just helps immensely, I think. Yeah, I definitely love to put uh, my classical influences in the pop music, because sometimes if I have to do falsetto or um, ad-libs and harmonies and stuff, like I would do it in my classical voice. And I just like to go really high. As <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because <laughs> not everybody can do that. <laughs> they wish yeah, they I was going to ask you, uh, how hard was that to trans? How hard is it to transition from classical to pop, and then maybe back to classical? Um, well, when I was singing, well, pop into classical, then back to pop. Like, it's actually pretty easy for me. Um, I don't know if it's a hard thing, but for me, like, I just it's a raspy voice, and you know, my pop voice is a bit raspy, um, and then soft, and then I would just switch to. It's, it's an easy switch for me. Um, I know there's something that happens in, like inside your throat. I don't know how to explain it, but like I don't know. I don't find it that hard. But obviously, sometimes there might be off days where I, if I don't um, warm up and stuff, then it'll be it'll sound cracky and yeah, and yeah. But I think it's okay for me, yeah. But you <laughs> I have great control. Okay. You know, it, yeah, it, you'd have to. That's have. What it takes. I just have to. I had just have to compliment you. I never had training. Uh, the best I could ever do was tenor, basically. <laughs> but uh, I just wondered how that transition went. So you moved to Los Angeles at some point in your career, and you became a model. Talk a little bit how that started and how exciting that was. I actually started modeling when I was back in the UK. Um, ah. Started when I was 16. I, I guess a few photographers um, and an agency just scouted me, and then so I would, I would just do it as a hobby, you know, besides school. Mm -hmm. And um, after modeling, I then kind of transitioned into the beauty pageant world. So I did a lot of beauty pageants uh, in back in England, and even when I came to LA, I did a few here um, as well. And then 
Um, when I came to LA, it was more for acting and music, so I did more of those. Um, I continued to do a bit of beauty pageants just for fun, but modeling, like, I kind of just do it as a hobby. Um, or, you know, if they are, like, print or commercial work, I would then do it professionally, obviously. Yeah, yeah so you've, you've done some TV commercials, and I think I've actually seen you in one. I thought you looked familiar. <laughs> so, commercial work, what is that like? I mean, is that very hard? You have to go in early? Uh, how does that work? Um, commercials to me are extremely fun because they're very relaxed, chilled, and you know, and it's a one-day thing. Or well, sometimes if they're a bit commercial, if they're a few days, um, you'll be on set for, for a few days. But um, usually it's just really chilled. Um, everyone's really nice. Everyone's working. Um, but most of the time we wait and then go on set, then wait again, and then go on set. <laughs> so it's just like, yeah, really relaxing for me. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, they, I, oh wow, that's got to be, I don't know, I just, I just have to envy you for having to do that. So, you're juggling modeling and singing and acting. Uh, what do you prefer the most to do? Singing, definitely. Yeah. Singing and or, acting, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the well, three. you know, you touch so many people with music. Because it's not just the lyrics, it's the emotions behind it, and um, my gosh, it can be heard worldwide, not just, you know, local TV or a country's TV, you know, so it's wonderful. So speaking of music, I, I loved uh, Two Feathers. Talk a little bit about that beginning video for you. Um, so the Two Feathers video was made as a commercial campaign um, to, I guess, represent my brand as a singer, um, actor, and model. Um, and the song itself, Two Feathers, I wrote it quite a while back, um, but I really wanted to make this song because I love metaphorical uh, meanings, like I love to put metaphors in my music and lyrics, um, and Two Feathers kind of represent, it could be, you know, siblings, or it could be like boyfriend and girlfriend, or whatever you want to, you know, rep um, think, but, so you know how feathers like take a long time to fall onto the floor yes. when you sit, and so the, I guess the meaning behind the song is that two for me like it was maybe um, a boyfriend and a girlfriend um, them like it takes really long for them to realize they're not meant to be together and then so it's just like they're just floating in the air kind of while deciding this and that um, just they're just unsure and then finally when it slowly hits to the ground they realize they're not meant to be together um, and it's time to let them go. So, yeah, that was basically what the song was about. A metaphor, yes. <laughs> it's a, it's a beautiful, a beautiful metaphor. So, uh, speaking of music, why don't we take a break and then we'll come back and talk to Victoria about some more music, Monica. Okay. We'll be right back with more with Victoria.
just no good, no good. It's too late to dream of My coffee queen. do you guys a little John party so if you like it please give it a like share subscribe hi everybody welcome back to it matters radio we are talking to the delightful Victoria singer songwriter actress model she has so many hats and she has mentioned that she likes her singing the best so uh, there's a great song that you do it's kind of sad and a little, but it's a, it's a good song. I believe it's called I've Been Poisoned by You. Can you talk to us a little bit about that great song? Uh, so Poisoned by You is my latest single. Um, it, I wrote this, well, I was inspired by my boyfriend to write this song. Uh, it's like in the beginning, beginning of a relationship, um, you know, you, the, the period, like the first six months, um, is very exciting, um, mm -hmm. you know, overwhelming, and everything is great. But then, kind of along the lines, and you feel poisoned by that person. Like you feel really inspired, you love that person. Like it's a lust or inf infatuation. Then along that line, after that period, it kind of just goes like um, you get to know more of each other, and then you get to learn the things that you don't like and like and etc. And so it kind of just brings you like from the journey from where you're in love to kind of in the middle zone. And then um, it's just a feeling of you kind of loving or having an infatuation for someone. It's just been poisoned. Um, yeah, that kind of feeling. Yeah, yeah poison guy, poison in a good way. Well, the thing is, you know, when we first start dating someone, um, we always put our best foot forward. You know, <laughs> we try too many because I don't think we feel safe yet in being right. you know, completely who right. we are until we trust them. And, and like you said, then later on, after about three, six months or so, we start letting the bits out. <laughs> <laughs> That's when love comes in play. <laughs> right. That so also tell about like how, um, you kind of want more from that person like um, if the person is kind of like shy or reserved or like doesn't really let out everything like you kind of want to know like just show show yourself to me because I am open I am you know ready for a much bigger commitment um just trust trust in me and just be there with me yeah. yes that, that trust is. means a lot it does right. <laughs> so you collaborated with Ricky Rebel on a song called Boys and Sometimes Girls and it got to number 28 on the billboard. Tell us a little bit about that. Yay. That billboard is one of the most in famous, to me anyway, listings of, of in, you know, independent music. Tell us about that. So um, the Boys and Girls and Sometimes Boys and Girls song was um, done by Ricky Rebel. He used to be a part of um, a huge boy band back in the days and now he's doing a solo career. And um, I guess I got connected um, through a friend, and um, they were look he was looking for a female vocalist um, to come on the song, and um, I, it just happened to be me, I guess. So then we um, collaborated, and I did, you know, um, the harmonies and the female vocals for the um, the chorus, and yeah, and then the music video came out amazing. I loved it. Um, yeah, and then you know, he he got on the Billboard charts, which is an amazing com accomplishment. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, what is IMDb rating? Tell me about that. I I noticed that they mentioned that in your bio. What is that? What is? Tell us a little bit about that. So, IMDb's um, the database is mostly for actors. Um, mm -hmm. Could be for singers as well, but mostly for actors. And um, I guess the top top industry, you know, A-listers, they will be at number one. Whoever you know this week or the, this month, they'd be at number one. And it's kind of just a database of the like a actors ranking. Um, depending on, it kind of fluctuates a lot as well, depending on if your movie has been released, then like people search um, your name on the database, then your ranking goes higher. Um, it just kind of fluctuates, but it's an actor's ranking. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. So uh, you did a lot of uh, some movies, I understand. Um, you worked for Disney. What was that like? What, what did you do for Disney? 
So I did a little um, a show called Walk the Prank on Disney. Uh, it was just um, our episode was like a Thanksgiving dinner, and then I just kind of got a friend that I wanted to prank. So then he came along. He has no idea what's going on. He thought it was like my friend's dinner party for Thanksgiving. And when he came on set, um, everything, you know, everyone was really cool. Um, they just played normal. And then we got into the date dining table. The turkey arrived. And in the middle of um, the grandma, like, kind of making a presentation or a speech, and the turkey kind of come, comes alive. And it was a little, um, um, <laughs> a short man. Like, he uh, just kind of, like, popped out out of the <laughs> really scared everyone. And it's kind of just, like, a fun Did Disney scare show. Him? <laughs> he was definitely scared. <laughs> oh gosh, I'd love to have a tape of that. <laughs> um, oh, That's just too funny. <laughs> that is funny. We get all kinds of fun things. So, um, of all the songs that you have done, what is your favorite one that you've written? Ooh, that's hard. Yeah. I really like Tea Feathers, but I've got a new single that I'm working on. I think that's going to be my favorite. It's going to be called Lovers. There. Oh, yeah. good. Do you have an idea of a, rela a release date for that yet? Or are you going to keep that a secret? Or? It'll be in January. Um, it's almost done, um, but the, the release date will be in January. Good. Oh, yeah. that's, we'll that's so very cool. So we can get some airtime on that, too. Thank we you. Wanna, we want to do that. So, um, I want to talk a little bit more about your personal feelings about indie music. Where would you like to see indie music go for you? Um, I think, you know, the message just has to be spread out even more to everyone who, you know, is an independent artist just starting out or even um, who's had a long journey but still, you know, going at it. Just to stay strong and uh, to keep promoting your music online, to keep engaging with fans, um, and hopefully the radio stations out there that plays indie music also, you know, are open to more indie submissions. And um, just to be open-minded and just to kind of help each other because it is a, a big community. Community, everyone like there's so many people out here, or even in other countries, trying to do music. But music is such a universal language, and everyone should. I, I don't know. I think. Everyone should just be nice to each other, help each other, support each other, See, and, and you know, stay strong, connect with each you other. You hit on something well, right there, Victoria, that um, I just don't understand. Um, I think other artists should help each other mm -hmm. and share information and support each other, where a lot of people, they'll just do their own, you know, and... Um, Sure, they want all the other artists to support them, but they won't give back. And I think your attitude is one where, you know, you're going to have more success because it is, music is universal and there are all types of music. And there's room for us to help each other in the industry. And I'm glad you brought that up. Because that's something of music, that I just don't understand, uh, that um, right. there's so many artists that uh, they want people to do, 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 but then they don't want to give back. And you need right. to give back. It's professional. Yes. I I think think on your own as well, because you do need a big support, like even from friends or family or just fans or other people, other right. artists. Um, and just to inspire each other. You can like swap stories. You can, you know, inspire each other, like inspire writing lyrics as well. Yes. Or even collaborations as well. I love collaborations because you come up with like great, sub, great, um, amazing music when you collaborate with other people because it's not just your perspective. It's other people's like genres and just to mix different genres and music as well. I love that. So yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So speaking of music, speaking of music, where can we find your music, Victoria? Where can we purchase your music? <laughs> and do you have a website? Uh, yes. So I do have a website. It's www.vectoria.com and most of my songs you could listen to on for free um, is on soundcloud.com slash life of Victoria or youtube.com slash Victoria if you want to watch our music videos but if you want to purchase it's on iTunes you just have to search Victoria uh, <laughs> and then the song name or just Victoria will find it and um, or I've got like a, a really short like 
um, helpful link where it's just hyperurl.co slash Victoria where you could purchase Poison by You, my latest single, and watch the lyric video. But um, it's on like Amazon, Spotify. So like there are a few links on that within that link where you could just purchase. Excuse so, me, guys. Will, will you be uh, will you be uh, touring in the net in the near future? And uh, any gigs that were coming up that you'd like to mention? Um, I actually just performed a few weeks ago at a um, global film award. Um, oh, wow. I did, yeah, that was really fun. But I think I'm I'm holding off on the touring because I want to finish my EP first. Then I can you know start touring and stuff. But I I'm still working on my EP. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it's been such a delight, Victoria, to talk to you. I do just have one last question. What does Victoria do for fun? What do you do for fun? <laughs> <laughs> I love to cook. So every day I would cook, spend and create dishes, right? So I would just find whatever I have in the fridge or the cupboard um, and then just kind of mix ingredients. And I, I never make the same dish what, um, twice. Because I think it's just fun to experiment and like add ingredients that you don't know. And it, the fun part is that I don't know how it's going to taste like at the end, at the end of the day. So I love to cook um, and bake. And then I just started gardening as well. So I do have like a Thai basil, sweet basil, tahini peppers that I use <laughs> in my cooking. But I love sports as well, um, playing tennis um, or, oh, I just got a new PlayStation. So I love, I'm playing a lot. Oh, there you go. Fun. <laughs> Hey, you could, you could go on chop or something, huh? <laughs> <laughs> amusement parks. I love amusement parks as well, like Six Flags. I have like a whole year membership. So, yeah. And last, last question. What advice would you give somebody coming up in the music, music, uh, music business? I think my um, main point would be to do your research, to be diligent, um, to trust yourself. Um, and, you know, if you... If things aren't going the way that you want to, just be patient. I think patience is is a virtue. Um, I'm very impatient, so like I, I get stressed a lot. But I think just to take <laughs> in the journey and you know not just like concentrate and stress about the destination. You have to follow the journey and embrace the journey because um, that I think that's the most amazing part. Like it could, it could be ups and downs, but as long as you embrace it and um, yeah, I think that that'll be great. And just you know to to even like stay strong and not to give up because there are yes. so many times when you know you feel really down and you just want to give up, but you just keep, I just keep going. Um, so just to have the ambition and passion and follow your dreams and, and you know, and you know Victoria, success to me, of course, it'd be wonderful to be world known, you know, and and uh, that right. famous and such. Um, but to do what you love to do in life, that makes one successful in life because they're not going to be 80 years old and go, gosh, I wish I had done this, this, and this, you know? Yeah. Right, right. So, so Victoria, thank you so much for joining us. We would love to have you back next year, if you would. Uh, catch, uh, let us catch up on what's been happening in yes. your, with your career. And your latest EP will be out, I believe you said, in January. So oh, we would we definitely... In January. Single, sorry, single in January. So we will definitely want to play that on our station. Uh, so thank you so much, and um, God bless you, and keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much for having me, and it's been really nice to see you guys play my song on the radio, and I would always retweet and stuff. So it's been amazing. So thank you so much. You're yeah. welcome, you are so Victoria. Welcome. You take care. Thank take you. care now. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Thank you. Okay. Carrie, I just thank love you, Victoria. She's I one of the you. most talented people I know, a young artist. Right. And um, what a great attitude, huh? Yes, and, and she's so energetic. I don't know if you've seen her videos. It's just oh, like, yeah. whoa. Yeah. I wish I could model <laughs> energy. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I hear that. hear that. Uh, I want to uh, uh, wish uh, everybody a nice no, you, holiday No, you don't season. want to wish anybody um, because we're going to listen to some music right now, Carrie. Okay. Take care. Well, we're going to listen to Bye -bye. Talk to you later.